I'm Jesse Yost with Comscope Ruckus. Today we're going to talk about a few general things that can help make your troubleshooting easier in Ruckus Cloud. So here we are logged into my cloud instance. Today what we're going to talk about isn't maybe even necessarily troubleshooting and maybe it's general things that you would do throughout the course of administration. But it is stuff that we get calls on from the Ruckus support desk so I figured it was important enough to go ahead and throw it into a video. The first thing we're going to talk about are Ruckus Cloud scheduled updates. So one of the big benefits to having Ruckus Cloud is that we manage the systems in firmware and security updates for you so that you don't have to worry about making sure that you're always at the latest patch level. Um, that's something that we take care of, but there are some things that you need to know about the updates. So when we are ready to do an update, we typically will email um, an update notification around the update that explains, you know, what the update is, what uh, bug fixes or enhancements it might include. Um, we and then we determine, we predetermine based on region when we are going to do the scheduled upgrade for this. Uh, we also list out what the impact's gonna be. If there's gonna be any impact to WLAN services, we will call that out. Uh, we will say what the duration for that anticipated outage is. Um, same thing with switch stuff. If we're gonna be impacting anything, we're gonna lay out for you exactly you know, what we're impacting and how long. Uh, the important thing to know there though is that you can modify the scheduled update. So based on your region, uh, if you go into administration and then go over to cloud version, we can see that if there is an upgrade available to us, it will be highlighted in yellow on the right hand side of this tab. You can also get a summary of this particular update. Um, and then more importantly, you can see when the update is scheduled for and you can set to change it. So if you are wanting to change the default time you were given for your upgrade in your region, click on the change button and pick a different time slot. Now I don't have an example of that because there isn't an active change that I can play with, but if you have a change uh, that is coming in, you will be able to modify the update. You don't have to accept the default. Now once you have updated the schedule, so if you uh, modified it from default, once you've selected it, make sure that you choose add to calendar to go ahead and apply that change. If you do nothing, it will accept the default, but now you know how to go in and reschedule that update. Moving on from rescheduling an upgrade, we're going to talk about APs and what we can do in terms of management and troubleshooting. So I just navigated over to networking devices and you can see that we are under the Wi-Fi tab and I currently have four access points. Um, so if you are an MSP or a Ruckus support personnel or even a Ruckus employee, you have a little bit different access to the cloud system than just regular customers. Regular customers, for instance, cannot um, command line into their APs, nor do they have web capabilities. So for a regular customer to manage uh, one of their APs, they have to do it all through this interface with no other additional help. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is just rebooting an AP. Of course, you could walk up to it or climb up to it, depending on where it's mounted and unplug it, but it's uh, much easier to do it from the web portal. So if you select an AP here, and I'm just gonna choose the R320, you are taken directly into that access point. So we can see a lot of things about this, this access point, but you can see we've got some actions to the upper right that we can perform. So I'm gonna click on more actions and here is our list of more actions. So first, right off the bat, we have reboot. So we can reboot it, we can factory reset it, and we can troubleshoot it. I'm gonna go ahead and reboot it. Uh, let's say that I think that there's a problem with this AP that a, a reboot might resolve. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and confirm it. And in the bottom right hand corner, we will see a little indication that it has rebooted. Now it will take a few minutes for the AP to come back up um, and be responsive. And it should come back up as operational. And you may see this transition uh, while that is in progress. So I'm just gonna give it a few minutes and we will come back. Okay, so the AP has rebooted and on the screen, you actually didn't even see the status change from operational, but if we select the R320, we can now see that the uptime 
is four minutes. So the reboot did take place. Uh, we can additionally uh, perform a few more actions for troubleshooting on this particular AP. Let's say that the reboot didn't fix our problem. We can uh, do some troubleshooting such as like doing a ping from this particular AP. So I could go ahead and ping the Google DNS and click run and we should be able to get a response so if this ap is for some reason unable to communicate out we could get a failure here and know that we need to troubleshoot a network issue locally you can also do a trace route to an ip or host name as well as a packet capture so we can choose a capture interface of 2.4 or 5 or even the wired port and then we can uh, also filter out um, if we want to focus in on a particular station's um, conversation, we can put in that station's MAC address here, or we can leave it empty and we can grab everything that we're hearing. And then we can also filter by frame type. So if we want all the traffic, uh, the management control and data, we can just leave these checked. If we are really only interested in management or control traffic, we can select each one of those independently. Once we click start, you will see that it goes to starting and then we should start capturing. Um, and you see the note there that the file is limited to the latest 20 meg of captured packets. So as we're sitting here capturing, it's only gonna take 20 meg of buffer uh, for that PCAP file. Once you've captured the traffic or you've done uh, the tasks that you're looking to grab, um, go ahead and click stop. It will prepare the file and it will um, download that to the browser as a .gz zipped extension. So you can see here that um, the MAC address for my AP came up here. I can open this GZ file. Uh, I can extract this particular PCAP to a specified folder. I'm just gonna put it in downloads. And then let me go ahead and open that particular file for us here. So now you can see in Wireshark, uh, here is what I was able to catch off of um, all of the, the wireless traffic. So this is a really good tool if you need to kind of get a look at the 802.11 uh, stuff going on uh, in your particular network. Finally, to wrap up this video, we're going to take a look at the same kind of things, but from a switch perspective. So uh, I know we said we didn't have CLI access to the APs, but we actually do have CLI access to the switches. However, once they're onboarding, the admin password becomes a hash that is managed through the web GUI. So to obtain that, to be able to log into the CLI of your switch, you have to navigate over to the venue and select the venue your switch resides within. And then from under settings in the top right, go to switch settings. So I'm not going to show the admin password here, but you can simply copy that admin password. And if I slide over my putty window, this is the IP address to my switch. So if I choose open and I say yes to this certificate, the default is admin. I'm going to right click to paste the password and here I am. I am now within the switch so I can make any CLI changes that I need to or just review or backup or whatever I need to do uh, from within here. So like, like you could with the AP, you can also reboot these specific devices. So if we just slide over to the network devices tab for this venue and select switch, we can see all of the switches that are underneath this venue. So we have to select the one that we want to actually manage or troubleshoot or reboot. Uh, so I'm just gonna click on the blue hyperlink to drill down into that particular switch. And again, in the upper right, you can see some of the familiar um, hyperlinks up there. We've got more actions. So if we click on more actions, we can reboot the switch. You will also notice that we have a CLI session here. The cool thing about this CLI session is that it does not require you to enter the password because the cloud already has that password saved within it. So if I click on CLI session here, we will be able to get into the CLI. So you will notice that it does warn you that CLI session changes take a few minutes to get updated on the cloud interface. So just keep in mind that, you know, you're used to using the CLI changes are in real time, but when you're doing it this way, there may be a little delay in those changes getting pushed around. So you can reboot here. You can also take a look at 
uh, the CLI here and make changes here. And uh, like you did with the uh, APs, you have access to troubleshooting. Uh, it's not under the More Actions dropdown. They break it into its own little tab here. So if we click on Troubleshooting, we can see again that we have a lot of the similar things. We can do a ping test. So I just am pinging again the Google DNS and we should get a reply here that we're all good. You can do a trace route. You can do an IP route. So we can actually look at the route table for this particular device. So I'll click show route here and I just have the default, the default route. You can also look at the Mac address table and we can specify the different ways we wanna look at this address table. We can look at it just on a port base, on a VLAN base or on a Mac address base. So uh, this is really good if you are needing some quick information about your device uh, right from the comfort of the cloud GUI. So you guys can use this to troubleshoot issues that you may be having. You know how to reboot things. You know how to access things. You know what you can and you can't access. And you know how to reschedule and update um, to prepare for the outage window that you need to set up uh, if there is impact to service. So hopefully you guys can use this stuff um, to make your experience with the cloud even better.